an act to amend the Legal Practitioners Act 2009, Bill No. 10 of 2020, enacted by the Parliament of the Republic of Fiji. <laughs> Secretary General. Consideration of bills. I now call upon the Honorable Attorney General to move his motion. You have the floor, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, pursuant to standing order 51, I move that the Employment Relations Amendment Bill 2020 be considered by Parliament without delay that the bill must pass through one stage of the single sitting of parliament, that the bill must not be referred to a standing committee or other committee of parliament, and that the bill must be debated and, be, must be debated and voted upon by parliament today, 28th of May 2020, and that one hour be given to debate the bill with the right of reply given to me as the member moving this motion. Thank you, sir. Is there a seconder? Honorable Speaker, sir, I beg to second the motion. Honorable members, I now call on the Honorable Attorney General to speak to his motion. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, the Employment Relations uh, Act was uh, promulgated in 2007. It had already been drafted in 2006 and sets out the framework for employment law in Fiji um, with a view to promoting the welfare and prosperity of all Fijians in the modern workforce. The bill to, before us, Mr. Speaker, sir, seeks to amend the Act to achieve two key policy objectives, both of which are intended to provide a more realistic work environment and conditions to ensure sustainability of jobs and businesses, and provides clarification on the meaning of an act of God during the COVID-19 period. Mr. Speaker, sir, consultations were held with the Office of the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Employment, Productivity, Industrial Relations, Ministry of Commerce, Trade, Tourism, Transport, the Office of Solicitor General, various other business houses and organizations related to the economic sector in Fiji. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, firstly, the bill clarifies that an act of God includes a pandemic as declared by the World Health Organization. Though a general statutory precedent exists in Section 2 of the Natural Disaster Management Act 1998 for viewing a pandemic as a natural disaster, the Employment Relations Act does not clarify whether pandemics constitute an act of God in the context of the rights and obligations of workers and employers. Section 24 of the Employment Relations Act sets out an employer's duty to provide work unless the worker has broken his or her contract, the contract is frustrated, or the performance of the contract is prevented by an act of God. The lack of clarity in whether pandemics constitute an act of God results in employer and worker uncertainty as to whether the duty to provide work continues during the COVID-19 period. Employers will also bear the burden of paying their workers despite COVID-19, which prevented them from providing the work in the first place. Though this matter may be clarified by the courts if, the, if a case arises, such process may be lengthy and thus it is in the public interest that clarity be provided as soon as possible. The bill also seeks to, Mr. Speaker, sir, amend the Employment Relations Act to establish a new framework for COVID-19 response measures by providing temporary relief to employers in relation to family care leave and paternity leave entitlements under the Act. Mr. Speaker, sir, paid family care leave and paternity leave entitlements were established in 2008, commencing on 1 January 2019. By way of background, this was not something that was um, uh, done by way of some long protracted negotiations between government or the unions. Government themselves, government itself, I should say, decided unilaterally the workers of Fiji needed paternity leave, which is a recognition that fathers actually play a key role in providing uh, uh, parental care, in particular after the birth of the child. And secondly, that there were instances where workers needed what we call family care leave because they did not neatly fall into sick leave, nor it deprived them of taking out, it deprived them from having full access to the annual leave because they had to sometimes take, take, sometimes take annual leave because someone else in the family was sick. So we introduced that, Mr. Speaker, sir. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, sir, a number of employers at that point in time 
did not like government for doing that because they felt we were too generous to the um, uh, empl employees or workers of Fiji because they said the productivity rates did not increase. Yet, we were by statute giving these workers additional leave, paid leave, or opportunity to stay home to attend to the sick in the family or to be able to rear the child after the birth of the child. At the point in time, the honorable members would also remember, we had also increased the number of maternity days. We had given an additional two weeks, Mr. Speaker, sir. That maternity leave increment is not being reduced. What we are reducing, though, Mr. Speaker, sir, that the bill seeks to amend the act to reduce these entitlements from the current entitlement of five working days each to two working days each. So we're not completely taking it away, but we are reducing it. Mr. Speaker, sir, to facilitate these amendments, the bill also provides for the transition into the reduced leave entitlements during the COVID-19 period. The bill clarifies that workers who have already used more than the reduced leave entitlement will not be made to reimburse the employers or waive any other leave entitlement. So in other words, if somebody has already taken five days family care leave, just because it's now been reduced to two does not mean they have to pay back for the three days. That's gone. They've taken it. That's fine. Workers who have used at least two days of family care leave or paternity leave will not be able to claim an added two days during the COVID-19 period or added three days. After the COVID-19 period ends, workers' entitlement to family care and paternity leave will resume as normal. So it's an interim measure. And it is at the discretion of the employer whether to approve more than two days family care or paternity leave, particularly where the employer approves such prior leave to the reduced entitlement. Mr. Speaker, sir, as I said, maternity leave, annual, annual leave, sick leave, none of that is being affected nor reduced, Mr. Speaker, sir. We have already instances, Mr. Speaker, sir, um, and I know the opposition only talks about uh, Fiji Airways or ATS. They hardly talk about the garment workers. They hardly talk about the construction workers, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, the reality of the matter is that there are some garment workers, even though the hours have been reduced or the days their work have been reduced to even two days because some of the garment factories are struggling with a lack of demand, some workers are actually still, some workers are still taking family care leave, taking family care leave on the two days of work that they have. So the employer actually has to pay, they will take five days leave, Mr. Speaker, sir. So that is an issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, the bill, of course, then says that the resumption of the five days, Mr. Speaker, sir, back into action will be decided upon by the Minister for Employment. Mr. Speaker, sir. The Minister for Employment will uh, decide, Mr. Speaker, sir, as to when uh, this uh, uh, two days period will end and when he can bring back the, the five days, Mr. Speaker, sir. So with those introductory remarks, Mr. Speaker, sir, we see this as a necessary uh, but temporary measure uh, to take us through this particular period and then we'll be able to uh, get back to the current provisions that, uh, that do exist, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you. I thank the Honorable Attorney General. The floor is now open for debate on this motion. You have the floor, sir. Thank Minister you, Mr. Speaker, Bala. sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to contribute towards the employment relation amendment.